Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and we've got some movement in XRP this morning. I like this, I don't know if this is a tweet, but I found it, I was at CoinMarketCap, went to the XRP and it was sitting right up here. XRP may not explode like others are going suddenly 20 to 30%, or it might, I've seen it do it, but slowly it will become one of the best performing altcoins in the market. I agree. The October bull run XRP can rise at least 15%. I agree with that. I think we're looking at probably much better than that. Let's see. I'm hitting the refresh button. We're at a, we've gone over 60 cents. We're at a 61.619. Good stuff. Look, they're calling for uh, XRP $1.50 now. XRP poised for major breakout. Let's see what else. XRP's epic climb awaits. Accumulation phase sets stage for record highs. Interesting. I, I've never spent a lot of time on coin market cap, but some interesting stuff. There it is again. Pump Tober. Well, what did the other what did the other guy call it? Let me see if I can go back and find that his tweet. Um. Well, do I? What do I do? Do I go to? Because it was this, let's see, I have not spent a lot of time on this. Anyway, I'll find it. But uh, okay, moving along. I think he called it Pumptober. Is two, two days away, CZ is out of prison now, China printing money, stocks making new all-time highs, pump season's about to start. You can make life-changing money in the next six to 12 months and retire your family. I didn't say that, he did. I'm not a financial advisor. Then uh, Dark Defender XRP is unstoppable. Enjoy your coffee. I happen to have my coffee right here, Dark Defender. Okay. Egrag Crypto says XRP testing your patience. We're on the brink of something exciting. Until we secure a solid close above 64 to 65 cents range and turn it into robust support. The next macro target is 75 cents. This level could be our launch pad for the significant surge towards a dollar and beyond. Stay steady, patience. Um, okay, and then we have this. Here's a, this is a Michigan voter. I wanted to play this first half of this to you. Listen to what he says. Who are you voting for? Um, that's a deep topic. Um, during COVID, I worked in Texas as a FEMA nurse. And the governor, they had hired nurses in to send us to the hospitals when we worked for those hospitals. But during that time, I learned about investment, the monetary system, and all this crazy stuff. So I'm a crypto investor. So basically, the crypto industry has been crippled by this Joe Biden administration. When companies like Library, which is a beautiful blockchain that you can put media on, I think it's going, I think it got a good potential. The CEO is nice, but anyway, yeah, yeah. when they try to when they tried to form the company, the government sued them because during during COVID-19, they wouldn't take down vaccine video. Yeah, there you go. So Gary targets them because Gary Gensler targets library because they uh, were not in. They didn't have the right politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we like can't that. talk too much about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Other, I'm sorry. Oh, bad. But uh, so bad. safe to say you'll be going. OK. That guy gets it, and if he if he was watching the library case, he's probably also an XRP holder and was probably following ETHgate as well. Speaking of ETHgate, Fruition Productions, which is about to start doing their showings around the country in November of XRP Unleashed. Are you going to attend one of the XRP Unleashed theater premieres in November? One night only, Target Cities, New York, LA, Boston, Houston, Atlanta, DC, Phoenix. I'm going to the screening is 19.9%. That's a pretty high number of people that are planning on going. Check this out, Raoul Paul. UK says, forget it, we'll do it. It became what's known as the Eurodollar market, which is the overseas market for dollar borrowing and lending. That becomes a 
we don't know the size of it, but let's call it a $400 trillion market. <laughs> Whoa. And then the US, then we get this big breakthrough in derivatives. The US has got the Chicago Board of Trade doing futures and options and all of this stuff. But we start to figure out more complicated structures, things like swaps. And the US stops its banks doing it by its use of regulatory capital. They're like, no, 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 this is inefficient. You can't do this. The UK and Europe went, well, we're going to regulate and allow it to happen because it's big. We've seen this before. That becomes a quadrillion dollar market. Jesus. That's why every single bank from about 1985, well, particularly after the big bang in London. So let's call it from about 1990 to about 2008, 2010, all the major banks' largest operations were London. So Goldman Sachs' biggest operation, most profitable, London. Merrill Lynch, London. Uh, Merrill Lynch is different because it was a brokerage firm. But JP Morgan, they were all London. So London, if you've been watching the news, is going to do the same thing. It's called regulatory arbitrage. London is putting together a very sensible set of crypto rules. As has Europe as has Switzerland, as has Singapore, as has Hong Kong, as has Australia. Okay, there's its old trading group that it did with euro dollars and it did with derivatives and it did with foreign exchange, all got their regulations in place. The UK is the hub at the middle and it will capture the lion's share. And before you know it, Coinbase, Gemini and everybody will move to London. Oh, look at that. Starts in London. Here's Kathy Wood talking Bitcoin. Okay, now let's talk pricing, or I shouldn't say pricing, uh, but the price of Bitcoin. You and I have had conversations now over many years where you talked about Bitcoin being worth something on the order of $500,000, uh, literally in only a couple of years from now. Do you stand by that? How does this ETF uh, change that, uh, speed that up, slow it down? What do you think? Yes, uh, so you'll find in our big ideas, so that's at arc-invest.com, the building blocks uh, for our price forecast. Uh, and our base case uh, is in the $600,000 range. Our bull case, uh, and we think the probability of the bull case has increased with this SEC approval, this is a green light, our bull case is $1.5 million by 2030. You can see the building blocks. You can see how conservative we are in terms of those building blocks. Uh, this is a big idea. It is a it is the first global decentralized digital rules based critical there rules based monetary system in history. Uh, it is a very big idea. And it, let me ask you the, the separate question, which is, do you believe that for it to get to those type of numbers, it has to become a currency, not just an asset? Um, one of the things that Brian Armstrong was talking about is he thinks that this is just going to create a lot more interest in crypto uh, across the board and that that is what's going to actually propel this and may even change the dynamic with which Bitcoin is being used, which is currently today as digital gold or something like that, but potentially actually could uh, leapfrog into the currency that people have talked about for many years. Yes, uh, uh, our first paper on this was in 2015. The white paper is still on our site. Okay, enough of that. I wanted you to see this too. This is um, the guy from uh, Bitwise. Listen to what he says. Bitcoin this morning trading just at about 62,000, 63,000 almost, uh, $62,808 has now jumped 50% since the start of the year and is nearing its all time high with much of that action driven by heavy interest in new spot Bitcoin ETFs. Our next guest helps run one of them. I want to bring in Bitwise Chief Investment Officer Matt Hogan. Good morning to you. When you look at what's been driving this price action on Bitcoin, Matt, how much of this is retail investors investing directly in bitcoin how much of it is the etf how much of it is institutions uh in the etf absolutely it's a great question we're seeing enormous demand for the bitwise bitcoin etf and across all of these etfs and the answer is it's all of those categories you're seeing retail investors come into these etfs you're seeing hedge funds, you're seeing RIAs or independent financial advisors. I think there's an even bigger wave coming in a few months as we start to see the major wirehouses turn on. But this has been Bitcoin's IPO moment. It's in a new era of price discovery. 
And I think prices could go substantially higher from here. Uh, let's talk about where they could go in just a minute. But I, I just want to go back to this idea of who you think is buying these ETFs, meaning how much of this is retail versus institutions? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when these ETFs first launch, they're not turned on at the major wirehouses, at the major institutions. So the initial demand out of the gate for any ETF, including these, is primarily retail and independent financial advisors and hedge funds. So I think that's the primary driver. That's what we're seeing. Right. But I'll tell you, after this meeting, I'm getting on a plane to go talk to one of the largest institutional consultants in the U.S. about this ETF. So right. we're going to see that next wave of institutional you, capital. You, you did mention hedge funds, which I will put in sort of an institutional institutional or professional category. In terms of this big move, do you, do you think it's that money that's pushed this or do you think it's straight retail? Oh, I think it's I think it's both. I think it's both. It's just new demand. If you think about Bitcoin pre the ETFs, there was only a small set of investors who could buy. I think you get the picture. They're both. So Kathy Wood is calling her base case 600,000, bull case 1.5 million by 2030. He's calling for 100 to 200 K or even higher. Um, I think he's talking this year is what I think he's talking. Okay. So in uh, DAIXRP.com, here's what we're going to do. We're going, somebody's going to say the quiet part out loud. The quiet part that we can't say on the, out here. So it's going to be perfectly summarized, maybe in a way that um, many wouldn't like to hear, but there's someone that's going to say exactly what, what I, I think we all think in our gut has gone on. Then we're going to hear a prison letter. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family, away we go.